<laughs> so just getting Leanne back on the rails. Welcome to Roar and Raw. Uh, <laughs> I think this is about show four, um, three or four, whatever it is. The, the, the weeks keep rolling on. Um, absolute ball. I love uh, having a chat with these guys every Friday afternoon. Wish Adam would come back, don't you? Yeah. We miss, we miss Adam. We really miss him. Adam's brain child and then he runs away. But that's okay. Adam Chant does a wonderful job, uh, media extraordinaire uh, type guy that he is. Um, thanks very much for setting it all up. Um, Leanne, thanks for joining us as that special guest star in the second week and staying forever. Hello. Nathan, how's your week been? Busy, busy week, productive week, good week, uh, but busy week. I actually got out for a couple of uh, meetings IRL in real life, which was a bit of a shock to the system. Ooh, yeah. I had to uh, figure out how to put pants on again. Uh, yeah, so that was, uh, but a good week, a good week all in all. I think that's good. good. Well, he's only had his pyjama bottoms on for a month now. Yeah, see, mine looks a bit. I'm wondering at what point I start expanding my little bitmoji thing. To start getting <laughs> so having more than that absolutely it will be interesting look absolutely fantastic news that we had this week and we'll get to that in the in the news section um really exciting that uh so many different things are happening in small business but it's also created every time we move forward we do find another gap and we found that again this week but i'll throw to you first nathan to have a chat about what's happened this week yeah, well, the news, the news, the news. It's uh, we've been overloaded, not not overloaded. I shouldn't say overloaded. We've been uh, we've been hit with grants, thankfully. Hooray! Hooray Yay. for grants. Grants are fantastic. So, so a reminder to everyone: if you have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, you've been under a rock. Get onto the grants. Uh, they're going to go quick. There's lots of people jumping in. Uh, do not delay. Please do not delay, especially if your business needs needs a bit of uh, cash injection and uh, needs to rebound after uh, COVID, get onto those grants. So that's uh, that's been the biggest news for this week. Uh, obviously, plenty of debate has been around our uh, borders. Obviously, we really, 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 really don't like our southern neighbours at all. Uh, and we prefer to just uh, say, stay one-sided in all future state of origin uh, series, I suppose, from now on, just Queensland versus Queensland, because why not? Uh, so is that like having America having that. the World Series? It really is. It'd be like America totally, having the World 100%. Series. Totally, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Queensland can be world champs of state of origin. Why not? Why not? Um, who would have thought that fire pits could have been such an important news topic? So uh, we're not going to talk about those too much at all. Uh, congratulations to everyone out there for continuing to fight the good fight against COVID. Uh, we continue to flatten the curve. Uh, doing great things. Hopefully that will pave the way for some restrictions continuing to be eased. And uh, hooray for schools being back next week as well. I'm sure there's many parents that are watching this right now that are breathing a heavy sigh of relief. Uh, I'm sure alcohol consumption can be directly mirrored to homeschooling. Um, no doubt about that. Uh, and thank you to everyone that got out this week and supported their local cafes and restaurants, uh, given that they could finally do a little bit of dine-in. Uh, I know I took I took that ability uh, myself earlier this week and got in there and uh, helped support a few local and uh, small businesses. So that is the news for the week. That's Ooh. fantastic. Now, Nathan, you may or may not, or anyone, um, may or may not know, the rules about the, the 10 people inside the cafe, if they have outdoor seating, that's just normal distancing rules for the outdoor seating. Is that right? Yes, or, you know, I believe so. The, 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 the ruling is a little grey in that area, unfortunately, and there still hasn't been a super clear clarification as to it. So um, if you're not sure, just defer back to the business owner because they'll be the one that will have to make the call on that exactly. Okay, cool. So uh, that's what, it, look, let's talk about the grants for a second because it's something that obviously very close to my heart, put a petition in the parliament and all that sort of stuff. This was the result that we're kind of looking for. There is still a big gap though, right? And we've done a survey in Brisbane Small Business about, hey, who has a turnover under 75 is, doesn't qualify for that? Who's got a turnover over 75 but doesn't qualify because they don't employ someone? 
um, and then who you know qualifies and doesn't give a rats about the rest of the people. Actually, no, we didn't put that last part on. They do give a rats about the rest of the people, uh, and there is still there is still a lot of concern for that. The numbers are coming up. I didn't look at them just before the show, but the last group that I looked at, it looks like about 60% of small business owners are operating by themselves, not turning over 75,000 and therefore not registered for GST, okay? That's a really big percentage. When you look at 2.4 million businesses in Australia and over 2.3 of them are or 2.2 of them being small businesses, 60% of our small business community are out there working alone, not turning over 75 grand, and therefore not able to access state government support. Yeah. Okay. On the other hand, there is still the job keeper that has been provided and job seeker if you didn't qualify for job keeper. And so there has been support for those people. That doesn't mean that we're going to give up and go, hey, we can't do anything, but we definitely need more support in able to be able to wage that further war, okay, yeah. uh, or take on further battles. Um, you know, I I invested very heavily and, and I had a bit of a, a meltdown yesterday because I'd invested very heavily in the fight to get grants on the table and invested so heavily in terms of time and energy that when they put the grants on the table, I didn't actually have any programs ready or clients sitting in the wings ready to lodge applications, which means that I've kind of missed out from that perspective. Um, so it's one of those, you know, I want to remind people, we do need to put our own gas masks on first. I'm saying this to myself and to everyone else out there. Look, it's it's fine to want to help everyone else, but you have to look after yourself too. And yeah. don't forget to do that. So, you know, don't beat yourself up too much, but at the same time, let's keep improving on what we're doing. So um, so there will be some news around business, small business in relation to that, um, about how we run it, how we manage it, how we can all uh, help contribute to the success of business, small business, so that we can take more of these fights on, on behalf of everyone else. Um, I just wanted to have that little rant. Sorry about that. That's okay. Quite all right, Kevin. Quite all right. I'm one of those small businesses. It's it's interesting because I'm a sole trader. I mean, I've got uh, contract jobs around, but I'm a sole trader under 75 grand. I don't employ staff. Um, there was, yeah, I can't prove a turnover dip between last March and this March. Um, like I've missed out on everything, and every, and even job seeker don't apply, don't qualify for that because my other half runs his own business and his income is still higher. Um, even oh, it's so everything I'm doing, I'm doing through his business, but little old me here is going. No, I just have to keep diversifying and getting more creative and doing what I do better because there's nothing coming my way, like not even Centrelink. You know what I mean? Not that it's just when you look down the list of, oh, okay, no, no, no. Like, Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's one of those challenges. It's hard sometimes to sit by and go, hey, government's helping, government's helping, government's helping. And you know, the, the government's job is to try and create full employment in the country, absolutely. Um, that That is the goal of every single government because if they have 100% employment of uh, people that can, then they're not paying, not shelling out a fortune in unemployment benefits. Um, and society's in a better place. There's a whole lot of other flow on effects that are really, really awesome oh, yeah. on that. Um, and they're doing everything they can, but they can't do everything. Like, crap, yeah. I would hate to be a politician right now. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I have noticed uh, federally, you know, the, you know, the opposition are complaining about what the what the Liberal Party have done and on a state basis the Liberal Party are complaining about what you know what the government has and hasn't done. And, and I think that I think they're taking pot shots sometimes where they shouldn't be. That's that's my personal viewpoint. Um, you know, there's been different approaches. The government are going right out there to see how they can help and, and doing yeah. everything that they can. 
but that but they're also not geniuses and they're you know as much as you try and think about a problem you can only ever think about it accidentally from your point of view yeah and so mm -hmm. that's the problem that you solve yeah. and i think that that's what's created some of these challenges in there and like um you know, hey, I can't prove that my income's gone down, but I know that it has, but I can't, I'm not quite bad enough to get support. Yeah. And when you look at it from a government point of view, it's like, okay, well, if you can't prove to us it's gone down, how do we support you? And it's, it is one of those questions that goes round and round and round. And I, uh, I appreciate where we're all coming from. Um, you know, we've all been affected and we're all in it. We're in it together, but as you said, we're all in different boats. Right. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But I think also it's taking that perspective of going, oh, okay, well, it's okay for me, but that must really suck for you. Not, oh, you should just, and I think people are starting to get into that mindset because there is so much money flying around. Oh, you should just apply for this, you should, as though it's just that easy. Um, even even the applications, there's a, there's a lot of detail in that. Um, oh, absolutely emails going out going hey if you're going to get this ask me and you're like no and i i you know and i registered for the for the uh, adaptation grant uh and looking at it and but the questioning is very uh to me intrusive uh probably even a little negative in the way that it's worded but it's designed to try and knock people out right yeah. and, and that's and I get that. Um, so not uh, I don't have a problem. Kate, the, the, the government's doing the best that they can. Let's let's try and get through it as best we can. I hear what you're saying, that you feel that they're not uh, supporting bricks and mortar services um, as much as, and, and that's frustrating. Um, and look, at the moment, we're all pretty frustrated. A lot of people are still feeling very raw. Uh, I've noticed this week um, a number of conversations that I've had with different people who are feeling quite uh, quite raw at this stage um, because of the longevity. And, and this is the start of the turning point. Yeah. There's still going to be a long way to go. Um, I'm not predicting that we're going to have a bounce, um, that people will go, hey, we can all go back to work. Awesome. Let's all spend money hmm. just like we used to. But that's my guess. I, I don't know. Anyway, let's not be too serious about it all because otherwise we all just start crying and that's no fun at all. And mm -hmm. it really makes for a really bad show. Um, Leanne, you are our empathy queen. Yay. I like that. I'll take that. So we're, so we're going to give you a segment called Empathise Yourself. Now, have you worked out the music? I told you that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> oh, I know. <coughs> it should be a Madonna song about it or something. I don't know. Well, the music I use on my podcast, my nine-year-old composed for me, so I can use that. Um, all right, so empathise yourself. Today, so I'm going to run with this for a second, and today I'm going to go with ask for help. If you need help, ask for help, because there's no shame in asking for help, and that might be in the form of, oh, you know what, like I've had a head cold all week, and it's going, can someone grab me that from the chemist? Like asking your husband, asking a neighbour, ask. So that's like the home stuff, asking for help and going, I'm not super woman, I can't do this all by myself. And as much as we talk about empathy being for other people, you have to have it for yourself first. So, no, yeah. And going, you know what, all the feelings are okay. I'm not superwoman and I have all the feelings in a minute, it seems, like from security to insecurity like that. Um, but I think also part of ask for help has to be now with the businesses. So like I said, I haven't qualified for anything. Um, but it's now reaching out and going, oh, okay, so this morning, Kevin, you had an awesome chat with Cindy. Cindy? Carly. Carly. Oh. Carly. Um, and you sort of go, oh, okay. Hey, there are people out there and it's starting to go, okay, I can't do all my social media by myself. I need to learn. I need to keep growing. I only have so many hours in the day. Um, and going, okay, so what can I offer? If I can't pay cash, 
what else have I got that maybe I could barter? So maybe if you give me some social media training, I'll give you some empathy training. Um, or if you give me a bit of a program that I can follow, just help me make it easy and I'll make it easy for you. Um, so, yeah. And I it think may not necessarily be, Carly, here's where we've got to spread, yeah, particularly when we're looking to exchange. One thing, if we're looking to exchange, I want to encourage you, invoice each other, pay cash to each other at the same time, do it properly. Yeah. I've found very few barter systems or barter agreements where both parties have felt like it was okay at the end. Yeah, gotcha. But more often than not, a barter, I'll do this for you, you do this for me, we don't exchange invoices. Everyone, I, I, I find more often than not, both parties feel a little ripped off in the situation. Yeah. Right? And I think that comes back to valuing your service as well. So if you go, my service is worth money, your service is worth money, let's get it on the books, let's make it official. And that sort of does it even better for things like insurance and um, things like that. But it's, again, with that self-empathy of going, no, 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 what I offer has value, what you offer has value. And it's also, I think, for really small businesses, getting into the practice of putting a price on your service because sometimes that can feel icky. So if you're still in that phase of, mm, how much should I charge? And they're a maid, I'll charge less. I'm actually going, no, no, no. This is what my service or product, this is its value. This is what it's bringing to you. And I shouldn't feel bad about discounting that. And though even though I am trading it, this is its value. And that's a that, again, is a self-confidence and a self-worth piece outside of the business. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And, and and that's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is you may need to spread the the web, the web. You may need to spread that message further afield that, hey, I'm looking for these services for someone who is looking for some empathy help. You know, yeah. um, we are going to exchange invoices. We'll make sure it's of the same value. Um, and don't you don't need to discount. You just need to tell me how much you can give me for that. Exactly. Yeah, uh, which is a really important point. So, Nathan, how are you going anyway this week? Good. good Just good, checking. Good. <laughs> he was engrossed. Yeah, good. Oh, always, always. Too Look, much to learn, too much to learn at times. Uh, and that's that's where I've really been loving doing our business, small business shows because I'm learning every day so much from all these people. and And sometimes before the shows... I'm helping them get their uh, get organised, get their thoughts organised, so that it comes out cohesively and stuff. And that sometimes is the best learning because I get all of the extra stuff, and we get to compound it into this. And so I feel a bit special like that. It's really cool. Yeah. So um, it really is. Um, now, so. We won't go to you. Well, it's uh, time to, to have a chat with our uh, talk about our, our social enterprise stuff too, which we've got. Um, now, we're going to have the Good Beer Co. on, but um, being as busy as we've all been this week, I forgot to reach out to James, so I'm not sure if he's – did he get back to you earlier on? I've messaged him, but he's doing his Friday thing. So I have messaged – I've sent him emails. I'm trying to get on to him, but um, – yeah. We'll keep talking about good beer until they show up. Um, we'll also keep talking about getting a sponsor until that shows up. Um, beer and Cider. If you are into beer and cider in any way, shape or form and you come across this show, look, cheapest sponsorship you're going to have. It's almost going to be as cheap <laughs> as the Forex push-up boys who basically just said, give us beer and we'll do push-ups and call us Forex push-up boys. Um so anyone that wants to give us free beer and cider, we'd be happy to promote your product. Um, we are going to talk about another example of pivoting. We've got um, Mike Hillston is coming on. Uh, that's going to be in 10 minutes. Uh, he does uh, bots, but he had to pivot his business because he's, he worked out that his business model wasn't quite working, and uh, and that's what happened. Um, he's 
we want to talk about how he's changed his business uh, over that time period, which kind of gives us 10 minutes to talk about a whole lot of other stuff. What other social enterprises are out there that we'd love to talk about this week? Um, let me see. Who have I spoken to this week? This week alone I've spoken to. So James is doing um, buy a beer for emergency service workers. So that's the good beer company. Um, so if you pay 20 bucks, a four pack gets sent to a frontline worker. And I think it's they're up to 1,507 packs that have gone to people. Now, I'm pretty sure, I believe um, part of that is Sober, which is S-O-B-A-H, and they make non-alcoholic beer. Oh, sorry. Which, <laughs> Did that come out? <laughs> which is trying to... I guess promote um, an alcohol free, you can still have fun without the alcohol, drink responsibly culture. So that's sober. Um, another one that's doing one like that is Altina Drinks and they do cocktails. Because you know, um, you know, when you're at a party or a wedding or whatever it is, they go, Do you want a beer, a wine, a soft drink, or an orange juice? And you kind of go, No. Um, I don't want any of those things. Um, so they sort of play in that middle space. So they're beautiful cocktails. So that's Altina cocktails. Um, we could go the complete other way and we talk about Jen Weidman, who's doing fourth space, which is taking um, psych services onto the streets. And then you've got Sunny Street, who are taking medical services onto the streets. So they're doing flu jabs for the homeless this week. Um awesome. And then I was talking to Dr. Marcus, who has a, okay, so I've got to wrap your head around this one. It's called Third Eye Management. And when you're in social enterprise, you're trying to um, practice and prove what it is that you do has a positive impact. So it's all around data management and data collection and what do you do with that data and, um, yeah, that's one. Um, what do you do with that data and we don't like collecting. We don't so he created a way in order to talk to all of your stakeholders, collect stories and then turn that into quantum. I'm opening a Mentos for my child who got a flu jab today. Um <laughs> that's all they get for a flu yeah. jab? Yeah, that's what asking. I'm not a asking for a friend. Um, but they then turn it into data that you can use in order to prioritise your service um, improvements. <laughs> anyway. So that's okay. That's One of these days we'll have a show where we don't have cats jumping on tables, kids coming in and screaming. But the, yeah, I don't think we need to rush it. I think we need to rush and do this, this. I, I think just over time we'll just get a little bit more professional. What do you reckon? Thanks. This is real life. Yeah, we'll get there eventually, eventually. No this rush. Lose Maybe when we're allowed to go into other venues together, we can, like, do a show in a venue one day. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Nice. We have some pants, though. Do it. What if it's in a venue they would have a dress code? I'd have to put on, like, Mm. Depends on the venue, I suppose. Yeah, it does. Um, so next I'm sure week, Mike Wilson isn't far away. He came. He is. Is is sort of logged on, but then he ran to the other end of the house. Um, <laughs> he'll he'll be here soon. So there's a couple of different things. Um, BJCC, what's the you know beautiful media board that you've got behind you there? Uh, what's coming up with them? Uh so uh, so next week we've got uh, a members only coffee roulette where what we're doing is uh, we understand our community still wants to network and meet new people and that sort of stuff and given our socially distant times we wanted to facilitate that in a digital way so we got coffee roulette off the ground pretty quickly so what people do is they register for that they'll get matched at random with another BJCC member and then next week uh, at their own uh, uh, at, at their own pace they'll, they'll be able to connect with that match and uh, catch up over Zoom for a coffee or a FaceTime wine or whatever it is and get to meet uh, someone new within the BJCC. So that's um, that'll be all next week. So there'll be lots of new matches and lots of uh, lots of new business and networking and connecting and all that sort of stuff, I'm sure. 
Because another that's one true. like that, because that's awesome. And I think that's kind of cool at the moment because you get to meet, it's like speed dating and good yeah, north. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Good north, they do speed dating. Oh, so, I see. Uh, next, so 2 30 next Thursday, good north. So Luke Facini and the team. He's got free speed networking, speed dating. Nice. <laughs> well done. I like it. I like it. Um, yes. That's the thing. People, they still, you need, they to, be, still you need to be clear on that. Is it speed people. dating or speed networking? Because if I show excitement to the wrong one, I'm going to get smashed by Melissa. <laughs> so I want to be really careful here. Speed network. networking. But Just I'm people. Some great. Just I don't Dang. Awesome. Now we've got Mike Hilston. Mike Hilston uh, builds chatbots. What he doesn't know about chatbots ain't worth knowing. Um, I'm going to bring him onto the screen. He's going to be sitting looking really professional any second now. Um, hey, Mike, how are you going? Hey, hey man. man. Oh, good day, Leanne. Nate, how are you, big fella? That's you, Nathan. That's you. I can't you know, hear. I can't hear, Mike. <laughs> Can't you? <laughs> we had oh, this problem. I'm once I'm again. into the black hole. I can, <laughs> I can hear you too, but I can't hear Mike. Mike. All right, I'll translate Mike for Mike. Hey, how you doing, Big Phil? <laughs> ah, hey, Mike, how's it going, mate? There you so, go. That's it. You got it. <laughs> so all all you need to do right now, Nathan, is sit there, pull some funny faces, and have a bit of fun. Uh, I want to have a chat about. Uh, I want to have a chat with uh, Mike Hilston uh, on the show because. Um, Coming into coming into COVID, um, Mike had tried a few different things that weren't quite working for um, that weren't quite working for uh, for his business, right? So he was working his backside off, uh, doing an awesome job for clients, but he found that the price point. And correct me if I'm wrong here. You found that the price point wasn't quite right for small business because they couldn't afford to build to get a new bot built all the time, a custom-made bot built all the time, yeah? Yeah. Um, Does that summarise the situation pretty well? Absolutely. And I think it all comes down to education. Um, you know, when you look at it, small businesses are quite happy to spend, say, five grand on a website where they might get 5% of their traffic. But, but, let's, but let's, let's get to there in a second. You do this quite regularly. Instead of... But people don't know you yet, Mike. So you're Mike Hilston. Oh, God, sorry, guys. I thought we were having a beer there for a minute. Yeah. Oh, well, no. you're a bit of an introduction. <laughs> it would be nice if you, yeah. you helped yeah, us no, out. No. Let them know you a little bit better than that, though. Yeah, yeah mate. Uh, yeah, so Mike Hilston. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, the Chatbot Agency. Um, we're a messenger marketing uh, specialist uh, company here, and we've built our own platform that enables us to to provide those services. Um, and uh, we've basically been looking after small businesses now for quite a number of years and uh, real estate agents at the same time. So, yeah, that's what, we, that's what we are, mate. And it says, so So marketing keeps changing and, and, and people's buying behaviours keep changing regularly. I was actually speaking to uh, another uh, small business colleague the other day and she said, hey, buying patterns are changing. It's getting harder and harder to get people off Facebook, but they're buying more on Facebook. Now, here's a cool thing for chatbots because you're not leaving the Facebook environment to start engaging with them. Uh, and that's and that's so over to you. Tell us a little bit about what chatbots do do because there's a, there, there is a bit of confusion. I remember, you know, when I was first starting talking to you and I was talking to uh to Melissa, my partner, about chatbots, she goes, oh, I hate them. Those bloody things that pop up on your website and then they're really clunky and they're just crap, Kevin. I hate those. But that's not really what a chatbot is, is it? No, mate. It, um, they, those would be what you call um, customer support. Assist oh, you're having a beer. Uh, they're basically customer support type uh, chatbots and they can be quite annoying. Uh, especially banking ones. If you want to get angry, go onto your banking one, and drive you nuts. Um, we're actually um, seeing we're obviously keeping with inside the Facebook ecosystem where everybody is. So why would you 
want to do the other. Um, we effectively build our, treat our chatbots as sort of like little automated receptionists um, at the gate, okay? Yep. And, and they'll be there and it's sort of like, okay, so how can we help you select from below? And then that'll take them into the, the right funnel. Yep. And at that point, um, it, it solves a couple of couple of issues. One, the customer is going to have an experience where they've actually been taken care of. Yep. Um, two, for the merchant or the business owner, okay, they're start they're automatically building a list at that point. As soon as they've come in, I've got Kevin Gammy in here. He's looked at my ad advertising chatbots. So obviously he's looking for something to do around Facebook advertising, okay? Yep. Or he could have been lost and all that jazz. So Absolutely. that's what we qualify. So the beauty is that as soon as someone starts engaging, all of a sudden you've got access to all of their details so that you can reach out and talk to them uh, in the future. Whereas on traditional marketing, they've actually got to click on the thing, fill out their details, and quite often they get bored of that uh, after they've spelt half of their name and they've forgotten what their email address is at oh, the time. Or maybe absolutely. that was just me. Um, anyway, so no, there, there's been a lot of Elvis Presleys when you go through a form on a website. But, yeah, just to clarify that, we're not getting all your details when you come into the chatbot. I'm, I'm only getting your name, your registered Facebook name, so I know that you're Kevin. Okay? I, I'm not getting your email address or your phone number. Okay. Awesome. But I don't need to. I no, don't need and that's to. Beauty, and that's the beauty of this. One of the challenges is when you're getting a custom-made one, it is quite expensive. And as you said, people people haven't yet uh, – hey, I remember when websites first came out and, and I am old enough for that. Well, maybe not first came out, but early on in the genre. Uh, you know, I'm talking back in, uh, you know, the mid-'90s. Um, and um and they were hellishly expensive and they did next to nothing. Um, these days you can get, you know, websites built uh, as static pages, but we know that people aren't really engaging from static yeah. pages and we know that as that that's not a really cool marketing strategy. From, from there, people are then going, okay, so if people are on Facebook, I'll create Facebook pages and that's cool and I can either work that with my website and all that sort of stuff. And people are building more sophisticated websites as well where people can do some e-commerce and get yeah. to that. But really it's about thinking about what you want people to do online as your ultimate transaction. That's that's the starting point, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's it's also your end point. So what you do yeah. is like, so where's my end point and work from there, yeah. So do you want them to book a meeting or, or book a massage or book a whatever or do you want yeah. them to um, hit a click to call or do you want them to send you a message or do you want them to what is that or buy a product? What is the ultimate end point transaction that you're trying to create and work backwards from there? Yeah. Now, when you decided... With the whole COVID-19, it gave you a highlight that, hey, yeah. there was a gap between what small businesses were, many small businesses were prepared to pay and what, you know, this is like a website. It needs to be programmed like a website. Yeah. In yeah. fact, probably more in a more sophisticated manner if you want to run a good bot, right? So there's expense associated with that that many small businesses either can't afford or aren't prepared to at this point in yeah. time because they're not seeing the true value on. And it made you take that moment to stop and think, how could I deliver this better? Yep, totally, mate, absolutely. Um, I think the 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 one thing that we'd learned, because um, we've built the software, okay, and Chatbot Agency was purely set up as, yeah, it's a real business. Um, we need a case study to be able to sell what we're selling now. And Chatbot Agency was it. You know, we were the original Chatbot builder. And um, so <clears throat> through that, we've, we've self-funded the business by understanding, uh, let's say, um, the early adopters, okay, and, and proving that the bots do work. Facebook loves them. The people who click through on ads, they're enjoying the experience because they're getting the information they need. They're not landing on a landing page and going, oh, now I've got to read crap. 
and all they want is my email address. And we know that the, let's say, the rates for people to sign up through a website is very low. Yep. But people, but still businesses were paying top dollar for that. So we looked at obviously trying to uh, to build a complex bot, like let's say the same as a website, okay, yep. for about the price of a landing page and they still thought it was uh, expensive. So we didn't, that understand, same, we didn't understand what was behind it and I get that. Okay, so, but you're, so with your pivot, what did you do? Yeah, so we just went back to what we originally set out to do and that was to provide the platform and the tools for anybody to be able to, one, build their own chatbots, okay, with a set of templates, okay, so we've, I'm providing all the templates that I've built since 2016 and going, there you go, use any of them, just customise them. Here's some videos, show you how to do it. The main bit is we're trying to, we're, you know, especially with this grant's being good, okay, this grant has been really good for some of those agencies that, that could be a videographer, now they're able to offer Facebook Messenger marketing into chatbots for their clients because the white the, the platform we built, we've now white labeled and we'll set it all up for them, connect it up with um, Stripe so they can get paid, does all their invoicing and all that kind of stuff. So they're looking at it, oh, wow, well, this is a... So a rather than being really but rather, you've gone right down in the detail, and this is really unlike you, Mike. Normally, you're speaking really, <laughs> you're speaking really, no, really, really it's scary, right? Come on, it's Friday afternoon. People need a bit of a lift. Come on, hurry. Yeah, now, yeah. what I want to do is I want you so so basically what you told me you've done is that they've got access to all of these templates. People yeah. people can now actually buy a license with you and sell chatbots to their friends, um, yeah. colleagues and stuff. Um, their colleagues are picking up chatbots at a fraction of the price that if they went and built it from scratch originally. Yeah. Um, so it's a real win-win situation that, you know, the end bot user can pick up a bot, you know, instead of paying, you know, if, if you had to custom build that bot for them, it might be $5,000 and $10,000. Yeah. But because it's something that's already built and all they're doing is changing the words in it, um, yeah. they're able to pick it up for cents in the dollar and, you know, maybe a thousand dollars and then they can put their own words in and then they can modify those to fit the situation absolutely and then i can just focus on training that's all i've ever wanted to do that was a that was a lot to get out of you today mike but thank you very much for that <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's probably up to, i think you need a beer as well oh um, man I need, I need more than a beer i'll tell you now it's so, been one of those things yeah so what we so basically if you've been interested in how can I communicate, how can I start engaging my clients even before I get them? Chatbots could be the answer. Um, if you're thinking about, hey, I'm a marketing agency and I would love to be able to offer this kind of service, then definitely have a reach out and have a chat with Mike because he can he can sell you a platform uh, where a whole lot of different uh, bots are already built, uh, which yes. is Really, the main. So it, it, it's provided you with an income stream without having to go and recreate the wheel all the time, yeah? Absolutely, absolutely, mate. And uh, during isolation, it's given us the time to do it. Uh, we've had the support, obviously, through JobKeeper. That's been a blessing uh, to some degree because, you know, we lost 80% of our business overnight. And uh, the first thing to go is, is a marketing expense. Absolutely. And, and 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 you were talking to me this morning when we were chatting about this. Uh, you said, oh, but oh, I've lost JobKeeper because, you know, I've built too much. Yeah. Oh, Boo-hoo, woe is me. However, the good news is, no, you haven't. So basically, once you get, once you're qualified for JobKeeper, you get, you keep getting JobKeeper. Okay. Yeah, and that made, that made my day, Kevin. Now that may change 30 June. They haven't legislated yeah. it. The government's looking at Will this be the case? Will it not? Because it is a great safety net and providing uh, that backdrop so that people can carry on and keep fixing their business whilst there is that downturn. Um, even if you have an upswing, it may be temporary. We're not sure how long things are going to be going through different waves of uh, excitement and everything. Uh, so, you know, they are still trying to do everything right. So, yeah. Mike, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for having a chat about... Bots. Mate, 
Messenger marketing, Kevin. It is. I'll bring the other guys <laughs> back. They can. Have you guys got any questions for Mike? I'm not quite bringing Nathan back just yet because he's not there. <laughs> Hello, Leanne. <laughs> Hello. Um, so do you make it, so the chatbots that you've got, do you make them sound like they're real people or is it really obvious off the bat that you're talking to a computer? Yep. Yeah, um, try and keep the conversation short, unlike how I speak to Kevin. Um, so really try and keep them to the point. Never try to be human, okay, because people are just going to go, oh, you know, taking the piss here. But um, really, I think you've got to tell them that they are talking to a robot. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Because like, it's really uh, go, oh, hang on, that's not Jane. Oh, what was that? Sorry? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So you would come along and you'd say, hey, I'm, I'm Leanne Butterworth's virtual assistant or digital assistant. Yeah. I'm here yeah. to guide you through and, you know, um, prompt you and find you, you know, what you're actually after. And, and, and you're just being up front. And it, for the business owner then, is it just a case of building a big decision tree in the back? Yeah, not even that. Um, I'd keep it so we've, we've built a lot of mobile sites in the past. So it's a little bit like building a mobile site. So you've got your services there. So you break those into let's say a carousel per service, and then you explain, if they click on a service, you explain what that service is about yeah. and is, you know, is this a service that you want, yes or no? And if they say yes and it's like, okay, uh, we can get you some more information, we just need to get some details, is that okay with you? So it's sort of like they're now opting in for something there and that's where we start asking for their details. And at you can have another call to action because you don't really need to get their details unless you want to spam them with email or, or mobile. Um, we can just say, click here to download a white paper on it or click here and book an appointment, 15-minute appointment. Yeah, gotcha. So you can actually send them the information still in Facebook. You don't have to go anywhere oh, else. Exactly. And we know who clicks on it and downloads it. That's the so beauty about the whole thing. If we're using bots in an ongoing platform, um, the beauty with email is it doesn't cost me to send an email to reach yeah, out. Email. So yeah. with a bot, is it? Do I still have to do a sponsored thing where it's costing me to reach out to people, or what's the story there? Yeah, good question. Um, getting them into the bot is effectively when I say you can get them. Anywhere, anyhow, into it. It could be from your email, off a link, okay? We run campaigns for clients here where we use SMS or MMS to reach out into their database and there's a link into the bot that's going to take them into the answers or, you know, where the deal is and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's just a link. Uh, a, a chatbot is just somewhere to link to. And wherever you can put a hyperlink, bang, you get them into the chatbot. So we use ads for the primary reason is when we're looking to build, um, you know, a, a list or let's say try and sell something, uh, we'll run ads. Facebook ads are the best way to get people into your list, hands down, cheapest, most effective, highest return on investment, without a doubt. Well, you can find people who look like people who you've already dealt with really quickly and all that sort of oh. stuff, and, you know, really awesome scenario. Oh. <laughs> it's more Mike. powerful than that, Kevin. We'll, we'll just stress this one, okay? It's more powerful than that. The beauty about getting them into your messenger, right, means that there was a conversation that took place with that person. So from that point, you don't necessarily need to have the list because Facebook's AI and their database is already storing that information. Yep. So building a lookalike audience on those people that have engaged and had a conversation with you is what Facebook wants because it makes their job easier. And now we can reach from there directly into a into their messenger inbox with a notification. It's absolutely no, and, and that's, 
And that's one of the things I love about talking to you because I keep learning new and different things. Mike, thanks very much for your time. We're coming up almost to our full uh, 45 minutes that we promised that we're going to run to. So I put down chatbotagency.com.au, is that right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the original. We'll put that into the comments uh, there. Um, so yes, she's there she's all over that. God bless you, Leanne. You're on. She's <coughs> there. And yeah. if you go to the Facebook page, it's Chatbot Agency there as well. Cool. I've hit that on LinkedIn too. Thank you very <laughs> much, Mike. I really appreciate it. No worries, guys. Have a good weekend, eh? Thank yeah. you. You too. Cheerio. Even Nathan says goodbye, but he doesn't know that he is. Where did, what is he doing? Hey, Nathan, are you back now? Who knows? Who knows? I, I can hear you two fine, but I couldn't hear Mike at all, unfortunately. I missed out on all the chatbots. You'll have to watch it, Bo. You can watch it later on. So. Um, I will. I will. Of course. And there is a really cool way that we can do that. Basically, we're going to replay these shows at 9 o'clock on a Monday morning in Brisbane Small Business um, so that that can let me get a good start to the week while the show's playing, um, which is an awesome way for us to have a replay of the show, let, help, help people get a great start to the week by finding out what happened last week uh, and to find out some really cool information about some businesses that have actually pivoted. What I love about Mike's story there is the fact that um, he identified the problem was uh, it's not so much that what he was doing wasn't great, it was that there was this disconnect about the value of it and so he found a way to offer the whole service but at a different price point. Um, and as well, he found, it, uh, he found a way that he could offer um, what he was doing as a complete service offering for other people so that they could go and sell that, uh, which gave him a... Uh, yeah, you know, a completely passive income from from that perspective, which is really, really, really awesome. So, really proud of you, Mike. Thanks for thanks for sharing your story with us today. Um, we'll catch up with James one week. He's going to come along and um, pretend that we're frontline people and give us beer. I'm sure. Um, We're essential service. Good. We are, and we're frontline, some way, shape, or form. Um, I want everyone to watch out for some exciting news happening uh, in Brisbane Small Business. Uh, for people who uh, aren't turning over 75 grand, we're going to create uh, some really cool uh, opportunities for you um, because I believe that you deserve it. Yeah. I believe, I believe we all do. And even, and yeah, even nice. for those above 75 who may not have been able to apply for the um, adoption grant, we'll have a chat about what we can do to help those people as well. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak to some cool people over the weekend, get some stuff organised and see what we can do. Um, what's coming up for you in the next week, Leanne? You've got, oh, you've posted uh, a webinar. I've got a webinar coming up. I'm so excited about it because it's an active webinar. It's not just me yapping at you for an hour because... But um, so it's an active webinar workshop about how to write emails with empathy, because oftentimes when you write emails, um, especially to colleagues at the moment, and everybody needs a bit of a, a bit of a virtual hug, but it's so easy at the moment to just shoot off an email with what it is that you need done. Or if you sort of go, oh, hey, um, I think you're struggling, but there's a, there's a way to do it that actually makes that person feel valued and that's ultimately what you want. So I'm going to look at five practical tips on how to use your language in emails to make the person on the other end feel valued. So whether it's you checking in going, hey, I notice in all the videos you've, um, or all of our meetings your video's been off, are you okay? There's a way to actually write emails and just making sure that you're doing these things so, so that you build connection, not make people go, oh, that dude's a bit of a dick. Absolutely. Look, I've got a little confession here. I find so often we all get busy and, and I find so often I find myself charging off down an email, answering something, and then I go, oh, oh, I, I better go back to the top of this email and go, hi, 
name. How yeah. are you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so June the 5th, June the 5th? Yes, Friday. June the 5th. June the 5th, 9.30 a.m., and we're going to do um, – and you can choose. You can either pay for the workshop uh, if you want to or you can have it for free if you want to. I don't mind either way. Um, that's my sort of little way of giving back. But we're going to go through step by step. Have you done this, 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 and this? <laughs> are you being human? That's one of the steps. Are you a human or are you a robot? That um, reminds me when I was talking – when I was coaching an accounting company uh, – recently uh and and yeah i literally had to stop them and say so when your client walks in the door what do you say yeah and they all looked at me in sheer terror and i said do you normally start with like hi how are you i mean oh yeah <laughs> you know it took a while for them to register that um nathan what do you got you got you, you got coffee roulette coming up can people still register for coffee roulette they most certainly can. They've got uh, they've got all of today and then over the weekend as well to, to get into it. And if they're not a member, it's quite all right. It's an easy process, super affordable as well. So they can jump on for six bucks and become oh, a yeah. member if they really wanted to do. So, yeah, easy. Awesome. Um, and you got some special code so you know that they're business, small business members and that sort of stuff as well. Um, totally. But yeah, you don't even exactly. need that with this one. It's six bucks. Who cares? Um, exactly. Get amongst what them. we do care about is you getting out and meeting more people through Coffee Roulette and different initiatives like that, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I've got big announcements in uh, in Brisbane Small Business on Monday. Awesome. Watch this space. Exciting. Um, and it will be a great opportunity for a whole host of people for a whole lot of different reasons. So uh, I want everyone to have a fantastic weekend. I um, don't want to hold you all up. Um, have, have drinks, have your ciders and beers and scotches and gins and coffees. Kalora in a hot chocolate is my thing at the moment. Nice. Keeps, me very happy. <laughs> Keeps everyone happy for a little bit while. Everyone, have, have a fantastic <laughs> weekend. Out there, if there's a coffee <laughs> liqueur distiller who'd like to um, sponsor the show, that'd be great. <laughs> Nathan knows one or two of them. I do, I do, I do. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make some questions. I'll ask some questions. I'll ask for some help. I'll take a lend of the lesson today. Ask for some help. So, and then oh. next week we might bring this slightly early because school goes back. Um, <laughs> not excited about that, but we might bring this sort of two-ish rather than. We're thinking two. Okay, so next week two o'clock will be the new time. We'll actually get right onto this far earlier and start. Uh, planning the show over the weekend rather than leaving it till Friday morning. Sorry about that. So um, everyone have a great weekend. I'll catch up with you later. Bye. Bye.